to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about nature study and I'm excited to share three suggestions I have for you that we use in our nature study. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you different curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ in your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's get into nature. is in an open collaboration with Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from The Waldock Way. I'll make sure their channels are linked down below. Every month they have a theme for this collaboration and this month's theme is join us for nature study. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'll make sure the playlist for all the other people participating in the collaboration is linked down in my description box so you can go check out their videos. I really love these kind of open collaborations and just gaining different ideas from so many different YouTube moms <laughs> or dads. It's okay if you're a YouTube dad as well. <laughs> and talking about these different topics with homeschool and with life, because we're all a little bit different. <laughs> we all like different things. So it's wonderful to watch all these different videos and gain different insights and then apply what works best in our homeschool space. So check out those other videos down below and let's get into these three suggestions. Okay, so my first suggestion is to be you, to remember to be you when it's nature study or just homeschooling in general, not just nature study, but I feel like it's so easy to compare ourselves with others and be like, oh, I'm not doing that, and I'm not doing that, and I'm not doing that, and the list goes on and on until our head's gonna explode because we're not doing everything that everyone else is doing. But guess what, we're all different and we don't all like the same things, so it's okay that we're not doing the same exact things. So for example, I, with nature study, I am not one that, I can't look at a tree and tell you what it is. I know what the trees in my yard are because we planted them, <laughs> but all my other plants, even though I planted them, I don't know what they are. I can only contain so much information about plants in my head. Whereas my neighbor who studied horticulture, can she starts talking about plants and she's like, oh, you mean this plant? And I'm like, sure, <laughs> sure, that's the plant I mean, I have no idea no idea whatsoever. They all look the same to me. It's like speaking French. It's the same. <laughs> so I can't go out there and tell you this is what kind of tree this is, or this is what kind of bird this is, or whatever. Maybe you have kids that like to look at scat or something, which is weird, but okay. <laughs> That's not for me. <laughs> Again, it's okay that we're different. You know, all these different things that I, I don't I don't really like those things. I don't like bugs. I don't like touching bugs. I don't like having them buzz around my head. You're like, how in the heck do you do nature study if you don't like these things? I never have. I have a, my best, best friend. She, her husband studies biology and her kids just bugs. They just pick them all up. They find them. They know exactly where to find them. They're like, look it, look it. And I'm like, thanks, I don't want to see it. Whereas my kids, they'll explore and pick up bugs a little bit, but not nearly as much because I don't like to do that. <laughs> it just like grosses me out and that's okay. That's okay that it grosses me out. So make sure that you're being you. I like to be outside and just enjoy the weather and walk around in it. I love going hiking. I love doing yard work. You know, if I'm doing yard work, I don't mind the bugs. I don't know why, but it doesn't bother me if I'm out there doing a whole bunch of yard work. So I like doing those sorts of things and that's how I apply nature study into our homeschool space is through things I like to do or gardening is another thing that I'm excited to start a garden this year. So just those types of things. So pick things that are you and that aren't somebody else. It doesn't mean you can't try something new and see if you like it, but make sure you're not like torturing yourself. If you don't like to touch bugs, then don't touch the bugs. My second suggestion is to get outside. I feel like you can't have a true like nature study unless you go outside. And this can look different for everyone, right? Some people might go to a park either just a park to play, or maybe it's a little bit more wooded of a park where you can look at the different trees or the kids can go find all like acorns or different types of leaves, all that fun stuff. Maybe there's a river. We have a park that has a river that runs through it. And so we're able to play in the river, discover some different things. So 
you know, get outside and do some things that are fun for you. Again, like gardening or maybe um, yard work. <laughs> it's good to teach kids that hard work of yard work. Hiking, I love hiking. It's one of my favorite things to do. We live near the mountains and I love hiking in the mountains. I just think they're so beautiful. And I love doing something that's really difficult. And that's why I love taking my kids on hikes because I love seeing them accomplish something that maybe they didn't think they could do or they didn't want to do. <laughs> Believe me, it's hard sometimes to get them on hikes. I'm gonna show you a little adventure that we went on about a week ago and it was super fun. I loved it. My kids were not as excited about it and they still complained a lot of the time, but I know that they enjoyed it and they had a fun time. When we were done, it was, it was all good fun. So I'm gonna show you our little adventure in going outside <laughs> and then we will come back and talk about my third suggestion. Okay, so we're getting ready to go on a hike. <laughs> I look so cute in my hat. I look like I'm gonna go rob a bank or something. Anyways, <laughs> so we're gonna go. It's like a balmy 23 degrees or 24 degrees. Last time I checked my phone <laughs> like 30 minutes ago. So it's not super warm, but we're gonna go and just hike a little bit to get out of the house. And I wanna get in the mountains and have some fun. And also to give you a little video footage <laughs> because the mountains here are beautiful. So I wanted to share them with you. So we're about ready to head out the door and then we're gonna get in the mountains. Betsy leaf. <laughs> yep, there's still a few leaves up here. You guys having fun playing with the leaves? You found a leaf? Oh, careful. Don't fall. Yeah. Itsy bitsy leaves, huh? Yeah, be careful. Don't slip on the ice. Okay, so we just got back from the hike. It's like five minutes away from our house, so it was a pretty quick drive to get there. But my nose might be a little red, sorry, I don't know. It was a little cold, but not too cold, actually. I just was wearing a hoodie and it wasn't too bad. And I was worried it was gonna be super muddy because it's been really warm here the last few days. But actually, the part of the mountain we were hiking on is doesn't get the sun, <laughs> so it was icy. <laughs> and there was a lot of dog pee, like it, I don't even know how much, like how many dogs did it take to make that much pee on the side of the mountain? You know, it's all frozen and gross. Anyway, it was still really good. I loved it. It was beautiful and I had so much fun, but it was a little slippery. So we had to be careful with that, but I'm glad our shoes are not caked in mud. <laughs> so it was a, it was a great time and I was glad to get outside. Okay, so I hope you liked our little adventure. I enjoyed it so much. And it wasn't, it wasn't as cool as I thought it was gonna be. So that was good. This year has been a little bit harder for winter. You know, I have, I live someplace where we get all the seasons and winter gets pretty darn cold, but usually it snows a lot. This year we haven't had snow. It's all been back east. We've sent all the snow back east. That's where it is. <laughs> and so we haven't had as much snow, which makes it harder when it's cold outside and there's no snow. My kids don't wanna go outside as much, because it's just cold, there's nothing to do. When there's snow on the ground, they go outside and they play quite a bit. So winter is a harder time for us to get outside. So any chance we can get when it maybe warms up, we're in a heat wave, you know, it's like above 25 degrees and we're out the door. <laughs> Not every day, because it's just still too cold, but I love getting outside every chance I get. And so I just think that's so important when you're planning your nature study, make sure that you're getting outside you're enjoying the outdoors in whatever way works best for your family, you know, whatever that may look like and use your surroundings, okay? 
we live by the mountains, so we use the mountains. If you live in wooded areas, use that. You know, back east there's lots of wooded areas. Just watch out for the ticks because those also, those also are very prevalent. Prevalent? Prevalent <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. If you live by the ocean, you know, go explore the ocean. Look at the tide pools. We lived by the ocean for several years, and that's always super fun to find all the creatures. We lived by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We went there. So if you live by aquariums, you know, that's always a fun thing to kind of do to switch it up a little bit. So use your environment that you're in where you live and explore that. And then obviously if you're able to, <laughs> Go, go explore someplace else, go on a little road trip or whatever, a family vacation as much as you can. I know a lot of us aren't traveling right now, but do those things and kind of explore different environments, but use the one you already have because there's so many great things to discover where you already live. So my third suggestion is to have some sort of nature schooling backpack or maybe a filing cabinet drawer thing that if you don't go like hiking a lot, but you can still take it with you wherever you go. So it can have some supplies in it that you guys can use for nature schooling. So I'm gonna show you our backpack. This was one that Angela Braniff here on YouTube showed several months ago. It might've been a couple years ago now. I don't even remember. Everything from last year from 2020 just kind of like blurs together and I can't keep track of time anymore. But I'm gonna show you the backpack and then just show you a few things that I like to put in it or a few other suggestions of things that we can put in it. So here it is, it's down here on the floor. <laughs> it's kind of heavy. So it's pretty big. They have a variety of different colors. This is just from Amazon. So I'll make sure it's linked down below and any other things I mention here, I'll make sure they're linked down below. But something I like about this too is you could use it for just traveling as well. It doesn't have to just be a nature schooling backpack. So it has dual purpose if you needed to go on just a couple day trip or something like that, you could use this. Or if you're camping or, you know, in the, in the woods or whatever with it, you could do that. So in here, we just have a few things and it kind of changes depending on what we're doing. You know, if our hike is going to be a little bit more remote and it's more likely things could happen, you know, not that they will, but it is more likely that I'll try to be a little bit more prepared, pack more water, all that kind of stuff. If not, then I'll pack a little less water, but I always pack water. I don't have water bottles in here today, but for our hiking trip that I just showed you, I always had water. I'd have water in here all the time, but I don't always keep all of our like nature study type stuff. So let me show you for us what that is. So I have notebooks for each of the kids. These are watercolor or they might be mixed media. I think I got them from Hobby Lobby. So you can see <laughs> some of the pictures from my kids. We haven't used them a lot. I forgot to mention I'm aspiring to be a better nature schooling mom. I love being outside and hiking, but this kind of stuff doesn't always come natural to me. You know, pull out like all the art supplies and go to town drawing something that you just saw in nature <laughs> isn't always just the natural response for me. So we're getting used to it. I think this is one of the pictures my daughter drew from this hiking trip because they were looking at all the trees and the ones that still had leaves on them. So I have one of these for each of them. And I didn't take these with us on our trip, our trip, <laughs> our hike this last time because I knew it was gonna be a short hike because it's snowy and we weren't gonna sit down on the hike and paint or do anything like that. But we have done that in the past. If there was a nature trail kind of thing we went on and there was some picnic benches. And so we sat down, there was a river right there and my kids filled up their paint brushes. So that's something else that I have in here is paint brushes. So let me show you the different types of paint brushes we get have. <laughs> let me find them. It's a mess in here. Okay, I found the paint brushes. <laughs> We're good to go. So I have a couple different options. If we are coming home and painting afterwards because maybe the trail wasn't super conducive to painting or like I said it was covered in snow and ice, then I have these paint brushes and these again are just some off of Amazon. So these ones we can just bring home, they can use some water and some watercolor and they can paint. Or I have a bunch of these ones which are super great. So these ones you can fill up with water, the top just untwists, and then you can fill it up with water. So you can use the water you're packing or like I said this one time we were by a river and so we just put them in the river and fill them up with the river water and use that. So if I can find pictures from that trip then I'll, I'll put some up here so you guys can see what I mean. So those are some of the paint brushes we use. So sometimes we are painting on the scene, on scene, on site, I guess is the word. I don't really know. 
<laughs> and sometimes we bring it home and paint, which is what we did this last week. My daughters wanted to paint when we got home. So I put out the tablecloth, they sat down and they painted some pictures, which I think is totally fine. And then other times we didn't want to really stop and paint or the kids were tired. So I took some pictures off my phone. So this is one where we hiked to a waterfall. So I printed it out and then I just set it on the table and then they could paint off of that. <laughs> my oldest son always just paints Pokemon. If you don't know me and haven't been around my channel, he's autistic and he just loves Pokemon. So that's usually what he paints and stuff. But I think that's also a great option. So there's lots of different options. So with the painting, this is what I have. This is watercolors. They broke the cover like the first day because they were impatient with getting it open. So this has a variety of colors. You could get the smaller size ones that have like seven colors or something in them and give each their own one. Or you could get really nice watercolors. I just, my kids are so young and they just kind of destroy things quickly. So, so I don't use those. I have some of them that I could use for me, but I, I don't have them for them, them for them. <laughs> Anyways, and so this is a really good option as well for that, again, from Amazon. Something else that's fun that sometimes I keep in here and sometimes I don't, it just depends how heavy I want the bag to be. And if we're not planning on painting out in the woods, <laughs> then I leave all this stuff at home and just take water and snacks in my bag. But these are fun. These are watercolor crayons right here. And my kids really enjoy using these. I don't even know if I can open the box, but they just look like crayons. So you can use them like a crayon or you can go back over them with water and kind of smudge them out. And these are somewhat similar. These are gel crayons. And I guess my, my four-year-old, I wasn't quite, I was upstairs doing something, but my husband heard her like not choking, but she was, <laughs> she had just eaten the top of one of these. So she was spitting it out in the trash can and she just wanted to know what it tasted like. So these are fun little crayons as well. Just easy for especially young kids. Okay, they have a big thing to grip and then they can draw on them that way. So those are good. Just don't eat them. They don't taste very good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this bag on the floor because there's not too much else in there, but I also usually have some Band-Aids in there. Again, some emergency supplies. I put more in depending where we're going and what we're doing. If we need to, you know, if it's going to be more likely that there could be an emergency situation and we're out in the middle of nowhere, then I'll try to be better prepared. But if we're just going to a park, then obviously I'm going to pack a little bit different. But then some other stuff that we don't always include, but would also be fun. So a magnifying glass. These are just cheap little science ones that I got for free. I think someone was getting rid of science kits when we lived in California. So we have these, but you could also find a nicer one or a bigger one if you wanted. Also a compass. This is just a fun one. I can't even, I got this off Amazon. I don't even know if I can get it open, guys. I don't even know how to open the compass. I've opened it before, but this one has a light on it as well, right here. So this little red light. Oh, here we go. And so, and then there's the compass and there's my really long hair right there. And so a compass is also fun and obviously good in an emergency. Something else that's fun is binoculars. My daughter has some somewhere. I don't know where they are, <laughs> but I'll link the ones we got down below. So those are some fun, like extra things to keep in your backpack. So if you're going to the park or into the mountains or, you know, even in your own yard, you could find some really cool things to look at. And then also, some books and again i do not carry these books in my bag like rarely would i ever do that unless we're going to the park to look for something specific but i wanted to show you a few that we have this one was a birthday present for my seven year old this is adventure girls she has another one it might be up in her bed she had like hoards all the books on her bunk bed oh i don't it drives me crazy but whatever so this one has a whole bunch of little like fun activities some of them are more outdoorsy type stuff and some of them are more inside. So this is a fun, just versatile book. You know, it has the little compass you can build on the back. So there's a lot of fun adventure things in here and I'll link her other one down below because I think they're all from Amazon. And then I have a couple from Usborn. So I haven't had a chance to really get into this. Again, I got it in the winter time and I just haven't cracked into it to see what's in it very much, but it looked, for my first glance, it looked really cool. So this is a write in nature activity book, but I'd probably just make copies so that all my kids could use it and then we don't waste 
the pages. So that one's really cool. And then this one is also an Usborne book. So this is just if they want to try to check out what kind of creatures they're looking at. This has a thousand things in nature. Sorry, it's kind of a big book. But there's just a lot of fun things in different habitats. So you could talk about habitats. You could go through this book as well. So this last one, it was another Angela Braniff recommendation. Hello Nature, and I'll link it. I feel like it's kind of hard to get. I can't remember, it's not from Amazon. At least not this one, maybe there is some available now. But there's a lot of kind of prompts for what you could do back here for being out in nature. So like this one just said, draw, um, I don't even know what that says. I can't read the cursor. <laughs> draw lots of birds. I don't know, on these pages, maybe that's what it's supposed to say. And then why not draw them flying in the sky? So you can draw all the birds on there. Again, you can make copies of this or just have them do it on separate watercolor paper. But then snails and slugs make slime and just showing the different trails. So there's a lot of fun stuff in this book as well. And I am new-ish to nature schooling or nature study. I love being outside, but actually like studying and making some sort of art with it is new for me. <laughs> so, but I think it's helpful to have a backpack or something I can grab and just know all of our stuff is in there and I can quickly grab it and add a few extra things we might need and then just go wherever we're going and have all of our supplies there. And you don't have to have paint. Like if your kids like drawing better, then have some drawing supplies, like whatever medium they kind of enjoy. Or if you want to test out different mediums, this is a good time to kind of mix art and nature together and just make it fun. So those are my three suggestions for nature study. Those are kind of things that we use in our nature study. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some different ideas. And remember to check out the playlist that will be linked down below so you can get even more ideas and maybe things that will better suit your family. And if you enjoy seeing this type of video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.